Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Oh, I hope you do have time for us today. Would you like to grab a cup of coffee or something? This is going to be uh, a show I believe is really going to touch your heart. I believe the Lord's going to minister to you through my guest. Her name is Janet Ellsworth, and her story is amazing. And she also conducts a nationwide and beyond prayer meeting every night from the Christian Television Network, and we'll give you more information on that. But um, let me go ahead and welcome all of you. I, I hope you feel at home when we're uh, here at Home Keepers giving you this program, the brand new people, those that are with us all the time. I really wish you could sit down here and we could really get acquainted, but this is the best we can do. So welcome to you. Stephanie's in the kitchen. We're going to make, get this, zucchini, lemon, poppy seed bread. It looks so good. Haven't tasted it yet, but we'll show it to you. And um, then uh, Sister Ellsworth, and I just uh, am so anxious for you to meet her because of the kind of uh, input she gets from the program and all. In fact, let me read you something here. My life had its share of trials and pain. I was adopted from an orphanage and went to work for a family friend who abused me in the basement of his store till I was 17 years old. I became afraid, insecure. I often wondered if there was anyone I could trust. I became pregnant at a young age and made the painful decision to place my baby girl for adoption. Eventually, I married and had another child. My husband, who was very troubled one day, took his own life. That's my guest today. And she is an overcomer, and that's why I want you to meet her. And before I join Stephanie, though, I want to again offer you this little free booklet about ways to stretch your budget. It is free, but we um, ask you to write in for it. Uh, the 800 number does not have this information. Just send your request to Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And I strongly encourage you to send some kind of an offering uh, to keep us on the air. And uh, we'll get it right out to you as, as long as the supply lasts. We do have some at the moment, so I hope to hear from you. And Stephanie's over here great in the zucchini. Yes, I am. You've noticed that there are recipes. Zucchini ends up in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I, I guess it's because it doesn't have a real strong flavor. Right, but, but you can get your vegetables in there. And... Um, I'll let you do this as soon as, as soon as you finish that. Okay, I'm done. Okay, <laughs> throw the sugar in, right? A little bit at a oh, a little time. bit at a time. Okay. <laughs> okay, you're done. Okay. Now, um, what what goes in here? Okay, this is, this is the flour, and this is um, salt and baking soda that you're gonna okay. put in there. You can just whisk that together. Okay. Do you want to do me one egg at a time? Uh huh. Please. You know, this reminds me of when I was learning to cook. They used to have home ec in school. Yes. And uh, this was always the basic thing. You cream the butter and sugar uh -huh. and then one egg at a time. Right. So it brings back a lot of memories. I loved home economics in school. I thought it was I think great. it's a shame they don't have it It now. really is. Well, I'm sure our audience will know, wants to know how's your financial situation today. We are on, the, on track. We're down to our last credit card I'm working on. You know, when you get that close, then things start popping up and happening. So we're just being diligent and trying our best. Well, you know what? She she got a couple of guys turned on to coupons here in the station, and they really get into it. Oh, huh? they're excited. Just slightly obnoxious, yeah. actually. We'll do this, um, just half of that. Okay. There you go, and then we'll do some the sour cream. I think we need a little spoon for this. Well, I know one of the guys you've gotten Sorry. interested. Uh, he is so enthusiastic. It's, it's quite entertaining. You can the rest of the sour cream if you want. In fact, I really wouldn't want to be the cashier when he checks out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Inside joke. I try to tell him, be nice. Uh huh. Be calm. Yeah, she warned him. Just, uh, you know, if they say no, they say no. Say thank you very much and move on. Yes. Okay, best of the flour. Don't argue over 25 cents. No, okay. not worth it. No. Okay. 
make it this mixed up and then we'll put the zucchini and stuff in. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit more of this. Now you told me something you might be doing this weekend that I really liked. Remember? You said if you had a nice weekend you might start wrapping Christmas yes. presents. Yes. I love and, it. And as we make this program, this is August. Mm -hmm. And I have seven and a half great grandchildren. And I got a little gift for each of them. They're in the closet, and I thought, why not wrap them now? You know, it, nothing like getting ahead of schedule at the holidays, because then you're not all stressed out at mm -hmm. the holidays. Nobody wants to be stressed out. No. So that's what I might do if I find myself with some leisure time. So There's the zucchini. The zucchini and Should I dump zest? this? Sure. Lemon zest, how much? The lemon zest is a tablespoon and then two teaspoons of poppy seed. We're just going to mix that all up. And I was really surprised you can't even see the zucchini. You could really slide no, that in under the radar. That would be a good way to get your kids to eat it. Exactly. Really. Okay, now speaking of gifts, uh, here's these go. Uh, this recipe calls for three of these little, this size. This is a three by five. Uh, but I'm sure you could. We've got some that we've got these that are a little bit bigger, so yeah, you can, you can do probably make two of those, two of those mm -hmm. or a whole loaf pan. But I would say this: I don't know anything more delightful than to get a food gift. I love it at Christmas time. Well, and even, you know what? You, it doesn't even have to be the holidays. Just practice random acts of kindness mm -hmm. and just drop off a cake with a note it on It means so a much, porch, friends. Telling them to have a good day. I remember one Christmas, I had somebody really close to me. They didn't have two nickels to rub together. And I know she stayed up late to bake me something, mm. some cookies. And Doesn't that just I'm make you hurt? And, you, and, of course, homemade things are so special this so then you just spray don't forget to spray the pans you this is really a them. nice consistency mm -hmm. you want to taste some sure you know it's good yeah it's oh, very yeah. good it's light a little glaze on that would be mm. good yeah a little lemon uh glaze mm -hmm. but this is really this is really a oh, lovely recipe that, that would really be good. so appreciated mm -hmm. and um one recipe gives you three gifts because it's not the idea that you're uh, something really big. It's just something that's very thoughtful, okay? Now, if you would like this recipe, that information is coming up on your screen. And following that, uh, you will see my guest as she opens her uh, television program that is on five nights a week, the Christian Television Network called You and Me, America's Prayer Meeting. You'll see Sister Ellsworth. Watch. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, please send your request along with a gift of $5 or more to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Are you troubled? Do you need someone to talk to? Then call in and share your thoughts. Just you and me. Jesus loves you. Good morning. Welcome to You and Me America's Prayer Meeting. I'm Pastor Janet, your host for this morning. As I do five mornings a week, I'd like to invite you to get comfortable, just cozy up, and stay with me for the next three hours as we pray for the callers that are calling in with their prayer requests this morning. I am grateful and thankful that the ear of the Lord is inclined to the cry of the righteous. He said, we have not because we ask not, and we have not because we ask amiss. He said, anything we ask in his name, in faith believing, if it's according to his word and according to his will Jesus is going to bring it to pass we believe and receive and we stand upon that rock that is Christ Jesus that every time we call upon his name he hears us out all right that's just a, a little taste <laughs> you never you. see it do you no I don't get to see it <laughs> oh welcome to home keepers thank you got to tell you a little secret you know pastor Richard Dorch started this program and he's in heaven today and I used to fill in for him once in a while not real often and the last time I did, I enjoyed doing that program more than any program I've ever done. But I said, I can't do it. Three hours, you leave here at 3.30 in the morning, and uh, my body clock was off, you know, for about <laughs> 10 or 11 days. Uh -huh. So uh, have you adjusted to that time? Yes, it's been fairly well. I thank God that he's given me the ability and the strength to do it because I really do love doing that program. 
and there are a lot of people calling in they can't you know they can't handle the calls really mm -hmm. uh, but I do want to touch on your own uh, life which most people would say is tragic but you are one of those that says and we know that all things work together for good you're that kind of a person but <clears throat> The uh, short biography I had said that from an orphanage you were adopted. How, how did you end up in the orphanage? Well, my mother and my father was not married. And my mother, I was told, came from a family in Detroit that was very wealthy. And they did not want her to marry my father. And so after she had me for a few months, she decided she couldn't take care of me. So she put me in an orphanage there in Detroit. So she... Um she did have you for a little while. Yes, that's what I was told. Did by. you ever meet them or? No, we have tried to find her, but we haven't been able to find her. Mm -hmm. oh, so, so you were then adopted, and uh, you, th your family kind of insisted you work with this man in his store, and he abused you to the age of 17? Yes, from the time I was 13 till I was 17, I worked for him. You know, we have way too many of those kind of stories, and I get angry every time I hear one of them. And you said your mother didn't believe you. No, I told my mother that he was, he, it was a drugstore, and he would tell me to go down into the basement to get supplies. Can We sold candy bars and uh, pop and so on and so forth. And when I'd go down in the basement, then he would come down in the basement and molest me. When I told my mother, my mother said, that's not so. And the very same day, she told me to get dressed and made me go to work for him. You know, that was a lot of the mindset. I think in the last 20 or more years, people are listening a little bit more to the children, but um, that, that is just tragic. Did your mom ever come to terms with that? Did she ever believe you? And Because I don't know what could be much more hurtful than if your mother doesn't believe you. Amen. Well, after when he passed away, my mother, of course, wanted me to go to the funeral, and of course, I didn't want to go. I didn't want any part of it. And my mother was so uh, upset. She was a woman that was upset all the time. She seemed to be sick a lot, very nervous, very full of anxiety, and really no peace in her life. And so I ended up going to the funeral to make my mother happy. And some of the ladies had come back to our house to have a little something to eat. And I happened to be out in the kitchen when my mother was in the living room talking with one of the other ladies. And I heard my mother say, wasn't it a shame that he had to leave the big uh, store that he had in another town because he got one of the girls that worked for him pregnant and came to our small town. So then I wondered then, why did my mother not believe me when I told her when she knew this had happened? Because I never knew that this had happened until after, the, at really, mm -hmm. the day that he was buried. So that just piles on the pain, really. <clears throat> so how old were you when you got pregnant with uh, a child that you gave up for adoption? I was 17. And did you give it up immediately? Yes, I did. And you didn't know, this was all before Jesus, I know. Yes, it was. Um, it, you know, when I look at your life, I think, now, what's more painful? Uh, the abuse, giving up the child? Uh, I mean, these are deep deep wounds. Um, what does it feel like to give up a child? Because I'm a mom. That seems in the realm of the impossible. It was very painful. You always wonder where they're at, what they're doing, what they look like. Still, right? What's going on in their life. Well, I have met her. Oh, you have? I have met Good. her, yes. <gasps> That's a blessing, I hope. Yes, it's a, a wonderful blessing. She's so pretty and so just gracious and kind and wonderful, has two wonderful children, a nice husband, and she lives outside the Detroit area. When we go to Michigan, she invites us down to come to dinner. And How did you meet her? Did you look her up or did she look for you? Well, I had another daughter and my other daughter looked up the daughter that I gave up for adoption and the two daughters found each other. Oh, that's great. <laughs> So you could maybe look back on that and not second guess it, that you did do the right thing. Yes, because when I first met her, she said to me, um, she said, I know you were young, and I know that you did what you felt was right for me. And she said, I was raised in a good home. And she told me that she had a brother that was adopted also, and how the family took vacations together and 
told me how she went to college and how she did things that I probably couldn't have ever given her in her life. So I feel that God led me, even though I didn't know who God was at that time, to do the right thing. I'm feeling warm and fuzzy now. I was mad a while ago. I'm feeling better. <laughs> okay, and then you married. Yes. And, and you married someone very troubled, obviously. Uh, how old were you when he took his life? I was approximately probably 39 or 40. Was that, were you shocked or did you know that he was troubled enough that that could be a possibility? Well, I really was shocked. He was, when I married him, he was, he worked, he did everything that a husband should do. And then all of a sudden he fell into alcoholism and he couldn't hold down a job. He would carry a bottle in the glove compartment of the car when he'd go to work. And he got to where he just couldn't hold the job. And what he did is he had gone to the bar one day when met some of his friends and they were all drinking. And he came home and he had been drinking and he went to the barn and he shot himself. Mm. Now where in this scenario did you meet the Lord? Well, I met the Lord through the husband that I'm married to now. He led me to the Lord. I was dating him, and he was always saying to me, let's go to church. And I was always saying, why? <laughs> was that totally foreign to you? <laughs> yes, I it mean, was. I mean, Jesus and church mm -hmm. and, and religion, yes. all these things, never been a part of your life? No, never been a part of my life. My mom had taken my sister and I maybe a couple times a year to the church there in the small town, but never a thing where you went three times a week, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, mm -hmm. I used to say, well, why are we going to church again? I want to go out and I want to go dancing. Uh -huh. I, want, I want to go out to dinner, you know, and he'd say, no, be ready. We're going to church. And one day the Lord sent an angel to me and I sang a song in tongues that I didn't know what speaking in tongues was. And it shocked me and it scared me, of course, because I didn't know what it was. But now as I look back, I feel that God was calling me to come and serve him then. So without hardly any knowledge at all except going to church, you had a, a, a supernatural experience. Yes. Did that, did that bring the joy that you so desperately needed? Was there something really immediate about that? Well, the thing of it is, is because I didn't understand it, I really didn't get the joy, and I was right back out that Friday night doing the same things in the world that I've been doing, going to the bars and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. And then as I went along and started realizing that there was something that was changing in my life by going to church, being faithful to the house of God, and seeing the things that God would do in people's life, I didn't understand people being slain in the spirit, people being healed. But all of a sudden, God just opened the door, and I was sitting in the front pew at a, at a church one night, and I yelled right out loud during the service, I see it, I see it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, yeah, God had to knock me in the head a few times, but I said, yeah, I, oh, I know who you are. And I st from that time on, I started gradually getting healed in the process of all the pain that I had gone through. The guy knew God was setting me free. And um, because there's so much in your past to have freedom over, if, uh, if it weren't for the Lord, you'd probably be an alcoholic mm -hmm. or a drug addict because I believe that there are some things that are so deep and so painful that you either medicate them or you give them to the Lord. And he gives you that beauty for ashes and he gives you that joy, you know, for mourning. Now, uh, you are on the air every night from midnight. When I watched that first clip and said, uh, good morning, I thought, good morning. She's on in the <laughs> middle of the night. But you do come on at midnight till 3 in the morning. And uh, people are calling in from all over the United States and beyond, I believe, uh, with uh, prayer requests. And the needs are so great. I remember when I did that program, I, I, I remember a child calling me, kind of whispering. Mm -hmm. And she said, my mom and I are getting ready to run away because the father was so abusive and and uh, that time of night people's defenses are kind of down aren't they yes and 
they're ready to be real honest. Is there one major prayer request if you categorize them? What would number one be, maybe? Well, I had a gentleman call me, and his name was Rabbi Jake. And when he called the program, he said that he was sitting at the desk writing a note to his wife ready to take his life, that his son had been killed four years earlier, and he wasn't able to release that pain that was there. And he said as he was writing, he looked up and he seen that there the program was on, You and Me, America's Prayer Meeting. And he said something swept over him. And he said that he wadded up the letter, he threw it in the wastebasket. And he said, you know what? I believe again that there really is a God. He said, my faith was gone. I had no hope for the future. I've never gotten over that phone call about how God moved on his life. I know, and anybody out there who thinks Christian television's a waste, I'm telling you, you cannot call Jay Leno at night. You can't call David Letterman. And uh, I wouldn't say this was typical, but there are plenty of things that are just, just as intense. Uh, the reason I ask you that question, because I encourage homekeepers, viewers, to write to us, and I take their prayer requests home with me. And the number one is usually always family. Yes. It, it's a marriage falling apart. It's a prodigal child. It's uh, just a number of things. And I'm sure that's a big caseload for you. Yes, we receive a lot of marriages that are on the rocks. And the thing that amazes me is people have been married for like 40 years. Yeah. And it just seems like after that long a time, why would they want to leave and go with somebody else? Why would they go against the word of God for whom God's joined together, let not man put asunder? Mm -hmm. And yet we're living in an age, and I think a lot of it has to do with Internet, and I'm not against Internet, mm -hmm. but they're finding people that they're unequally yoked with. Mm -hmm. And just to walk off and leave your mate, leave your children, a lot of them got grandchildren. I just don't see how well, they Well, you bring up it. the Internet. I remember <laughs> a, a quote from... Uh, Dr. Ben Hayden, who is a wonderful, wonderful man of God, uh, who used to have a program here. He might be retired now, but he said, Satan will tease you with pictures that will never develop. And let me tell you, when you get on the Internet and you see all these uh, beautiful bodies and faces and all, don't be a fool. Mm -hmm. That's don't right. be a fool. Don't throw away a marriage vow, a marriage covenant for something that is really way out there and and uh, probably isn't true. Uh, you were also healed of cancer? Yes. I had breast cancer three times. I had the first lump taken out, and they said it was cancerous, and they wanted to remove my breast. And I said, I'm going to go home and pray. I'll get back with you in two weeks. And I went back, and it just so happened that the cancer doctor had graduated from Oral Roberts University. And when I went back and talked to him, he said, well, I have everything all set up for you. And I said, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to stand on the word of God. And he said, is there anything I can do for you? And I said, yes, let's pray together. So I went home and I was fine for about three years. And then I had a second lump come. And so again, they took it out and they were saying, well, you need to have your breasts removed. And I said, nothing doing, nothing doing. I'm going to stand on the word of God. So a third one came. <laughs> and when the third one came, my doctor said, this is definitely, we have to remove your breasts. I said, no, nope, I'll see you in two weeks. I'm going to go home and pray. When I went back in two weeks, my doctor said, I cannot find the lump anywhere in you. And she said, didn't we already do two surgeries where we took the lumps out? And I said, yes. And she said, where? And I said, underneath and to the right side. She said, well, the scars are gone also. So God yeah. did a total <laughs> miracle in, in my the life. Scars away. Took yes. the scars away. Took the scars away as well. What's the most gratifying thing about hosting you and me because I think it's I wish we had more of this kind of television when there's a real connection with the viewers it's live for one thing and um, it has to be in order to do that I just love how you can depend on God for anything all things are possible with God no matter what the call is that they come in if we stand in faith believing we're two or more are gathered in his name he will bring it to pass. And on the 10 months that I've been on there, 
We've had over a thousand miracles that the Lord's performed. So I just get so much joy. I get happy <laughs> driving in, getting ready for I've it. I've heard even. you cry a lot, too. And I thought, <laughs> that's great. The Bible says to weep with those who Amen. weep. And um, uh, I, th I think that there are a lot of Christians. That's such a wonderful trait, that tenderness, mm -hmm. uh, that you can weep or you, you can laugh with them. Now, we've, we've got the website up. <clears throat> if you've never heard about this program, I've only seen it once because I'm usually asleep before you come on the air. But that website is up there, and it's on DISH, it's on Direct, it's on the Christian Television Network, and it's uh, very, very obvious that not everybody's asleep like I am <laughs> at midnight because uh, usually the, you really can't handle all the calls that, that come in. And just so simple. You just sit there and pray for them. Amen. Maybe we've tried wonderful. to make it too hard, you know. <laughs> uh -huh. And to think of uh, the life you've led and how the Lord has used it because I have a sense that anytime anybody calls up who's been molested, you immediately, you, you have a bond. Yes. I look back at my life and everything that I went through and I now stand upon the scripture that says you go through things not for yourself but to help other people. Mm -hmm. And I realize now God is good all the time. No matter what you go mm -hmm. through, he's always there for you. He'll always give you victory. He'll always set you free. You just have to wait upon God to bring it to pass. Well, what a story and what a, what a mighty God we serve that uh, you, can, you can be victorious. You really can. I, I think you can if you want to be because everything's there to make it possible. So remember the You and Me America's Prayer Meeting is on uh, Eastern Standard Time at midnight until 3 o'clock in the morning. And, of course, that gives uh, benefit to people on the West Coast because uh, it, you, you can see it um, before your bedtime. But we have a lady here who prays over every email. She, her heart is one of reaching out to God for others. And I'm delighted to have her on the program today and to <clears throat> let you know that uh, there's this kind of a ministry available to you and we're already always here to pray with you for your problems so let us know what they are and please join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper god bless you if you would like a video copy of today's homekeepers program for just 1995 call 1-800-229-0059 for credit card orders or send a gift of at least 1995 to homekeepers p.o box 6922 clearwater florida 33758 be sure to note the program number which appears on your screen